For those of you who are unfamiliar, are the people who fall asleep on the couch after dinner while your mother lists which of your cousins gained the most weight. But being a dad, it's not easy. The thing they don't tell you about fatherhood is that for like an hour a day, you have to get on the floor and pretend to be a horse. But we came up with something fun in honor of this special day. We want to put some dads to the test. So we went on the street and we asked them to answer basic questions about their children in our first ever pop quiz. Are you and your son pretty close? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah? And uh, you consider yourself a pretty involved parent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. So I'm just going to ask you some questions about your son. Right. And just answer them to the best of your ability. I will do. No problem. Okay, very good. Yeah. What is your son's birthday? No, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a really good one, because I don't know. You really don't know his no, birthday? No, I don't know Do you consider you guys pretty close? Yeah. What is your daughter's favorite subject in school? Social study. Is that true? No. What grade is your daughter going into? Ninth grade. What's the name of your daughter's school? Um, Ash Creek Elementary School? No. River Creek? No. Something Creek? No. What color are your daughter's eyes? Brown. Alright, let's look. That is incorrect. They're blue. I have a brown eyed daughter though. What is your daughter's birthday? Uh, May 17th. Oh no, it's the 14th, and I don't know what year. Can you name your daughter's teacher? This is Jones. No. Nope. This is Moore. Is that Moore? No. Jones is my elementary school teacher. <laughs> Can you name their teachers? Of course I cannot. <laughs> what are your daughter's birthdays? Oh, why do you do this to me? What about her? Aguila. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> oh, yeah, yesterday! <laughs> her birthday was yesterday. Yes, you forgot. Yesterday. Yes. Can you name the best friend of each of your daughters? Uh, Mari Carmen Rojas, Jimena Lopez. Mm -hmm. Adamari Lopez, mm -hmm. Cristina Cornejo. Okay. Uh, can you give us the name of their doctor? Fadi Torres. Can you give us the name of their dentist? Uh, Dave's Dental Lab. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what are your daughter's birthdays? Yes, uh, May 28, 2009, August 8, 2013, February 24, 2006. All right, now who, who's going to go home and start asking your parents those questions just to see how well they do? Okay, uh, just be nice to them and, and give them some grace if they get the answers incorrect, all right? Hey, uh, happy Wednesday. We're glad you guys are here. Um, excited for tonight. Uh, just a few announcements for you. First of all, if you're interested in helping out with the worship band or uh, and you know, doing more that way or helping out with AV, uh, come talk to myself or Boncha or Joey afterwards. Uh, we'd love just to, to have uh, that conversation with you. Um, a couple other things. Uh, remember, uh, Sunday morning we have a class now at 10.30 uh, that meets down here in the student space, so we would love to see you then. And then also, uh, on Wednesday nights uh, at 5 o'clock, we're going to start opening up room 5007. So the room uh, furthest, on the, uh, furthest down the hallway on the left-hand side. And uh, that should be a, a room for prayer. And so we have some different prayers in there. We have lists of students. We would love for you to come in and, and use that space uh, beforehand and just pray for the night. Pray for uh, your friends. Just pray for yourself. Even you know, uh, we would just love. Um, we would just love you know you guys praying together on Wednesday nights. So our leaders are using that space. Parents are using that space as well. Um, we would just we would just love uh, for that room to be filled uh, with students praying each and every Wednesday night before the services begin. So just know that that's going to be down there, and uh, and we would love to, to see you in there. Um, I'm going to pray, and then Bonch and Caleb are going to lead us in some worship. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather tonight. Lord, I pray that we never take one of these from you. 
just ask you to do big things tonight. We ask for your spirit to move freely. Lord, I pray that the students and the leaders, that we just examine our hearts tonight, Lord. That we're able to ask ourselves tough questions. Father, that we just be real with where we're at. Lord, I just pray that each and every one of these students take a step closer to you tonight, whatever that step might look like. I want to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Just in your name we pray. Let's stand for the worship.
Lord, you are the God of revival. We believe that in our darkest moments, God, you're there waiting. And that you have a plan to bring us to the highest places and bring us back down again, God, in your will. We are just honored to be your people, God. We're honored to be just witnesses of your glory. Today we lift up your praise with all love. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please open up to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to be continuing our conversation that began in grow groups about sanctification. I know a lot of you grew up in the church. Uh, I grew up in the church as well. And I don't know if you had a similar experience as I did, which was, you know, saying the sinner's prayer at a, at a young age, uh, but not, you know, maybe fully understanding what all that was. And so I don't know if you did this as well, but over the course of about, I don't know, the next maybe 10 years, I approximately said the sinner's prayer about 38 times. I don't know if that was the case for you, but I didn't really have much of a of assurance of my salvation at all. I didn't really know how to maybe look at, okay, do I have a true, genuine, saving faith? And now look, looking back on it, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I did at that time, but, you know, another thing that was really big around that time period was this, um, not necessarily phenomenon, but the series of, of books and movies that was super popular called the Left Behind series. Have any of you ever heard of that? Okay, that scared me to death. All right, I, I read all the books for the teenage, because they have the teenage type ones, the Left Behind series for teens. And, uh, and so I read all those books, my mom bought me all of them, and um, it really, really, Messed up my uh, eschatology and times theology. Uh, it, you, but anyways, that's a conversation for another time. Uh, I, I was scared to death that I was going to be left behind during the rapture. Okay, And I, I fully blame it on that series of books and that movie. Um, but I was, I was worried. I was scared. So because of that, I said the sinner's prayer all the time. Just to make sure. Just to double check. You know, I wanted to be good. I wanted to be good. It wasn't because I wanted to be following Christ. It's because I was worried that I would get left behind. That the rapture would happen and I would not be with Jesus. Or that I would die and not be in heaven. And so that shaped what I viewed or how I viewed my salvation for years. And something that did not shape that was being made like Christ. And this process of sanctification and growing to be made like him after placing your faith and trust in him as your Lord and Savior. That just wasn't happening in my life. And so we're continuing this conversation where we're going to be reading it in Colossians chapter 3. And so let's, let's look at what Paul writes here in Colossians about this process of sanctification and about growing to be, to be made like Christ after you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Because I think it's a big indicator when we look at our lives and we ask ourselves a question, do I have a true and genuine saving faith? And that's a question we all need to be asking ourselves. Not because maybe we're, we're unsure and we don't have maybe an insurance, but, but making sure that it's, that it's genuine. That we're not being deceived, that we're not deceiving ourselves. Or that we're not just faking it because we know the right answers because we grew up in church. Let's look at Colossians 3, beginning in verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For if you, for you die, and your life is hidden with Christ in God, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him glory. The second word that we see here in verse 1 is so important to this entire text. And that word is if. That's a, I mean, that's a small word in the sense that it's you know, two letters. My, my son is learning, 
learning letters because we're going to like send them to a school next year and uh, like a preschool. And so, uh, you know, you learn letters and things like that. So he's always asking, hey, what does this word start with? What, what letter does this word start with? So I'm like, you know, constantly doing that and trying to teach him some of these two letter words. And that's, that's a two letter word right there. But that's an incredibly important word for this entire text because it all depends, everything that follows this depends on that word. If, it all depends on this word. If you have been raised with Christ. If you have not been raised with Christ, the rest of that text does not apply to you. But this is to, to those of you who would say that you are, you have been raised with Christ. You have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The old ways of life are gone and have been buried. And you have been raised with Christ. You have been made new. That word is so important to this text. So, I'm going to ask you, that word if right there, does this text apply to you? Have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you said, I can't do this on my own. I can't live for the things of this world. Have you turned from those things? And have you turned towards him? You have to answer that question for yourself. And you need to be real. You need to be honest with that, too. Before you can look and continue on in that text. So think about that. You know, last week, Brad was talking about holiness. And he, he was saying how if you're not growing in holiness, if you're not growing and being made like Christ, you, you really need to ask yourself about your salvation experience. Do you have a true and genuine saving faith? And if you do, it says to seek the things that are above about your heart and your desire and to set your mind on things above so your thoughts as well connecting the heart and your mind are you seeking the things that are above or do you get maybe too caught up in the things of this world the distractions the worries the fears the temptations the things that are temporary because they are of this world. Or you're setting your mind on things that are eternal. How different would your day look if you brought the hope of heaven into the things of this earth? If the thoughts of things above if they adorn all of our waking hours, how different would your life be? But how do we do that? How do we, how do we practically set our minds and our hearts on things that are above when we're living right here? Well, I think it's incredibly important to, to do that is to start your day in God's Word. To start your day in God's Word. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't have distractions throughout the day. I mean, I, I, I'm in ministry and I have plenty of distractions. There are plenty of times where I'm not setting my mind or my heart on things that are above. So you have to have reminders throughout the day as well. Do you have reminders in your life to help you focus on things that are eternal? Or that are eternal? Do you have reminders, maybe... Maybe just things that you are, are looking for, conversations that you know that you need to have with people that are eternally focused. What are some reminders? What are some things that you can help you throughout your day to make sure that you are focused on things that are above? How different would your life look if your life looks like what Moses told the Israelites? In Deuteronomy 6, verse 7 to 26. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise, be thinking about God's word. Be having conversations about God. If we claim more of those moments for the things that are above, 
we might be we might be surprised at the strength and the joy and the peace that we can feel in this world when we are focused on things that are above. And then we get to verse five. Therefore, so because of those things above, therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now, put away all of the following. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. Look at verse 5. Put to death. Put to death. That is strong language being used by Paul here that he has used no other times <clears throat> in any other Pauline epistle. He is saying, put that to death. Do away with it. Anything, anything that belongs to the earthly nature, anything that is not of God, put it to death. If it's not of God, if it's not from above, it's not of you when you are new. Those things need to die. Because they're not who you are. That's not you anymore. Because you have been made new. Those things, they, yeah, they were, they were the old you. But that's not who you are. Ask yourself, have you put those things to death? Or do those things describe you? Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, greed, idolatry. Is that you? Those things that you're living in? Yes, they might be things that you might fall into, you might you might do occasionally. But there's a difference between occasional sin and habitual sin. Or or living or walking in those sins, as we see described in other places in the Bible. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In this process of sanctification, being made like Christ, even when you are made new, when you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, made new, you will still sin. You will still fall short of the glory of God. You are not going to be perfected on this side of the glory. But are those things, those things that you're, you're living with, and you're walking with, because they need to be put to death. Verse 7, it says you once walked in these things when you were living in them. Remember, those made up your old life. That's what you did. Because you didn't know better. That's who you were before Christ. Those things describe you. And, and maybe think about it. If you, if you know that you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, remember what it was like before you, before you made that decision. What was your life like? They made up your life. I, I love how John Newton describes this. John Newton an old theologian who's super dead, lived in like the 1700s. He once wrote, I am not what I might be. I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I wish to be. I am not what I hope to be. But thank God, I'm not where I once was. And I can say that with great confidence. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Thank God, I'm not who I was. Do you feel that way? Are you different now than you were before you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? This passage talks about your old self and your new self. 
Is there a difference in your life between the two of those? Or are you the same person and doing the same things that you were doing before you said you gave your life to Christ? But yet, let me ask you this. What makes you different than your friends that are non-believers? Is there a difference? Is there a difference that you come here on Wednesday nights? Is that the only difference? Maybe sometimes on Sunday mornings? Or is your lifestyle completely different? Not just are you moral, but has Christ changed your life? Is there a difference in the you now and the old you? We see these descriptions. Like in, in, in verse 8. In verse 8, we see. But now, put away all the following anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Verse 9, do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self. So this but now, but now because you are new, put those things away. They do not belong in this life of Christ, in this new life. They do not belong. They should not be present in your life. Man, I'm about to punch this. Sorry, it keeps on falling off. They should not be, here we go again. They should not be part of your life. Are they? Are they? Are they in your life? Are you new? Verse 10. And have put on the new self. You are being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of your creator. Is this the case? For you. Is this the case for you? Are these things that you were once walking in? Or are they things that you are currently walking in? And that's the question that you need to ask yourself tonight. Bonja and Caleb are going to come back up and lead us in a little bit more worship. But I want you to ask yourself these things. I want you to close, close your eyes right now. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to ask yourself, do you look like your old self or do you look like the new self that you claim that you're living in? Are there things that you are walking in that don't line up with this new life. Are you different? Are you different? Or are you the same as you were? Maybe tonight, maybe tonight's the night that you need to make a decision. That you're no longer going to try to live the old life while claiming you're made new. If that's the case for you, please find a leader to talk to tonight. We would love to have that conversation with you. Maybe, maybe you've never made that decision before.
students who are done living the old life, who are ready to live the new life, and we're encouraging each other, challenging each other along the way. Let's pray. God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness because we deserve none of this. Or we do not deserve to be made new. yet living in the old. Lord, that they have a true, genuine, saving faith and that they live a new way because of it. Lord, I pray that the students in here encourage and challenge other students as well. something that we can just do on our own, but it's only by you, through your grace and faith. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.